Innocence of Youth by Mael10 I know I'll be getting a lot of hate for this, but my favorite Pokemon game is Pearl. I don't know why, but it was the most I've spent on any Pokemon game ever. I feel like it was the best, but I got so much hate I was always afraid to admit it. Some of my friends, family, and brother owning it, and we would constantly trade in battle, so it was even more addicting. I found myself exploring the Eterna Forest again because I merely disregarded it because of my strong dislike for grass and bug Pokemon, but I noticed a tree that could be cut down around 15 to 25 steps from the exit. I haven't been to this area of the game before, I thought to myself, filled with excitement and anticipation. There's a bunch of patches of grass around the area, so I began to shuffle through casually to see if there are any rare type Pokemon I haven't caught or seen. No, just a bunch of Badoos and Roselias. I sighed and saved my game. I explore more of this area. I move Red, my character, I like to use the traditional Pokemon trainer names, up and something catches my eye and gets me excited. I grin and see an old rundown mansion of some sort. The first thing that pops into my mind, Ghost Pokemon. The second was, why is it out here in the Eterna Forest? I save my game outside of the mansion and rush in with a grin. The text on the top came down, and it said it was called the Old Chateau. Interesting name, I thought to myself. I began running around like a maniac, searching for new exciting ghost Pokemon. Ghastly, Ghastly, another one, and another. What the hell, just Ghastlies? I mutter, disappointed. Let's look through the rooms and see if there's anything of interest, I mutter again. I walk into the dinning room and see something, something so chilling and confusing I still question it today. I saw an old butler standing behind the table. It stared at me. I try moving red, but he is frozen there, staring at this old butler. He was a typical sprite, bald with some hair on the sides and a black suit. He begins to float away to the left side of the screen. What? I exclaim. Chills run down my spine, almost making me drop my DS. Red can move now. I begin to run left of where the butler was. He vanished, I said softly. I move more and find a kitchen with a basic refrigerator, sink, and a trash can. What? I just saw him, he went here, I thought. I check all around the room, nothing but more ghastlies. What did I just see? A glitch? I return to the kitchen and check all the stuff in there. I find nothing in the refrigerator and then I go to the trash can and find an antidote. Why is there an antidote in the trash, I question. I begin to head upstairs and notice there are a bunch of rooms. Shit, I say kind of annoyed. I don't want to go in all these rooms, but I do anyway. First room, empty. The screen is letting me see what's in the other rooms. I saw a TV in the room next to the one I am in. I then leave the first room and rush into the second. I approach the TV and press A. The text box says, the TV has an oddly malevolent feel as if it was staring. This gave me goosebumps, excited, to what lies ahead in the old chateau. I see the other room, it's just two beds. I skipped that room and went to the next one to see what was in store for me. As I walked in, I saw in the room to the right of me a little girl sprite looking left and she floated out of the room. My mouth drops and I run out of the room and she isn't in the hallway. Then I entered her room and she wasn't there. The trash cans were empty, nothing interesting on the second floor. I walked down the stairs, kind of disappointed and filled with questions on what I had just encountered. As I reach the first floor, Red stops moving and the screen shakes, as if there were an earthquake. Red looks around. It looks like he's freaking out and panicking. How did I react? What the hell is going on? This is amazing! It eventually stops and I could move Red once more. I, the hairs on my arms, stand up as I check all the rooms again. Nothing but more ghastlies? Oh, come on. Nothing else? This made me a bit upset because it was so anticlimactic. It made me wanting more. I became obsessed with the story of the old chateau. The next day I went to school and asked my friend Matt about the old chateau. He told me he experienced the same thing when he went there, but then I asked him why the butler and the little girl were trapped in the old chateau. He told me he read in a Pokemon magazine that explained a bit that went on. He spoke, Years ago, before the Eternal Forest emerged, there lived a very wealthy family. 
The husband and wife were not the luckiest of people when it came to having a baby. The wife would constantly have miscarriages every time they tried to have a child. When they lost all hope, they turned to religion. They went into the closest city, which was of course Eterna City, and they went into the church and prayed, prayed, prayed so they could bear a child. They left the church feeling somewhat confident. They noticed an old blind man sitting outside the church begging for money. He began to approach them slowly. He was thin. His bones looked frail. He walked as if he had gotten beaten up. One hand on his stomach, another reaching out. Can you please spare me some change? I haven't eaten in days. He spoke very weak and trying not to cough on the couple. The husband was very kind-hearted. He gave the old man a small roll of twenties and offered him to spend the night with them. The old man was grateful, but he kindly rejected the offer to stay with them. The old man told the couple that he was a psychic. He dropped his cup and waved the same hand in front of the woman. Only this time, something changed inside the man. His body didn't seem as weak as before. His arm was firm over the woman. He approached her and put his hand on her stomach and whispered to them, Your prayers will be answered sooner than you think. But beware, your child's life will be in jeopardy if you neglect her. As he spoke these words, he faded away like smoke in front of the couple, leaving them in awe. Nine months pass, and the husband and wife had a baby girl, but there were complications during the delivery, and the mother died. The daughter was named Winter, because most of the parents' life events happened in winter. First meeting, first kiss, marriage, and now the birth of their daughter. As the years passed, the father became more and more depressed because Winter looked like her mother. He couldn't bear to look at her. She was never taught right from wrong, how to read or write. She was a spoiled brat. She constantly picked on and tortured her own personal butler, Stefano. Over time of constant harassment and torture, the butler poisoned Winter and threw away the antidote to save her in the trash. That's all Matt told me. The story was sad and left me wanting more insight of the old chateau. That's not all that could have happened. This made me angry, so angry I stopped playing Pokemon for a good while. By good while, about two months. It was challenging trying to get the old chateau out of my mind. I've even had dreams about my first experience in the old chateau, but a bit more in detail. One of my dreams went like this. I checked all of the rooms again, searching for winter. I see her exit another like before, but this time I ran out of the room and I see her standing in the hallway. She was much more distinguishable. She had a bright red bow in her hair, a white dress with another red bow tied around her waist that went down to her ankles. She was barefoot. Her hair was jet black, it matched the lighting in the room. Her eyes were dark blue, which was uncommon. Normally people with black hair have either brown eyes or green eyes. I love them though, I couldn't stop looking. She was sad. She began to cry. I couldn't help but notice how bright her eyes got when she cried. I feel strange to admit it, but she was beautiful when she cried. She pointed behind me, and I quickly turn. There he stood, Stefano. He was a few inches taller than me, really thin and wrinkly. The expression on his face was pure anger, and his wrinkles gave more emphasis to it. Then I woke up, in a sweat, but that was normal when I dreamt about this. I still haven't played my Pearl in months, and I swore it would have been longer, but something so exciting happened that I just had to play it. It was walking through my neighborhood and saw a yard sale sign. To make a long story short, the man who was selling all the stuff sold me used action replay for $5. I rush home and retrieve my DS and pop in my Pearl. I don't normally condone cheating, but I figure since I did pretty much everything, why not mess around with action replay? It could be fun. I see some of the mods in the game I could turn on. Walk through walls, 999 rare candies mod, but something caught my eye that both excited me and made me sweat. One of the mods was called Old Chateau Uncut Version. So naturally I turned that mod on, and only that mod, and I started my game. When I opened the game, everything was normal. Normal opening, normal continue. The only thing that wasn't normal was that Red was standing in front of the old chateau. I didn't save here last, I mumbled to myself. It was the mod, I suppose. I walked in, but nothing is different. I walked up about a few feet with Red, and the room started to shake again. And there was a big, blinding flash that lit up my DS. The flash soon faded. I saw Red again, standing in the same spot, 
but the color of the game changed. The game looked like it was rendered in the sepia effect. What's up with the color? Why did it change? I say confused. I walk into the dining room where I once saw Stefano the butler, and I see the father, Winter, and Stefano. Stefano looked irritated, annoyed, and exhausted. The father had a drink in one hand and a bunch of mail in the other. A text box appears. Stefano, come play with me again. Daddy's busy with bills again. One moment, Mistress Winter. Let me have a word with your father. No, I want to play now! She then kicks Stefano in the shins and smacks him in the face. Stefano, come play now! Ow, fine already! Go into your room and I'll be there in a moment. Yippee! She skips to her room, turns to the father with a disapproval expression on his face. Master Henson, I apologize, but you have to teach that daughter of yours some manners and respect. That's why I have you. Excuse me? You're supposed to teach her manners. You watch her all day. It's only common sense. That's what I pay you for. I'm paid to serve your family. I'm not a babysitter. You have neglected your daughter. I'm not even sure she knows your real name. Takes a big swig of his drink. Does it look like I care, Stefano? I pay you, so do what I say, you dog. Stefano's sprite color fades a bit. He looks pale and distraught. Yes, sir, he utters. The text box closes, and I follow Stefano into Winter's room. We both enter, but Stefano is tackled by Winter. Stefano grabs his groin and falls to the ground in pain. Another text box appears. Get up, slave. You shouldn't have made me wait. Ugh, mistress, why? I said get up. She's holding one of her toy swords made out of metal, and she strikes him on the arms and legs. Oh, mistress, I'll play. Just stop. This is more fun, though. She strikes him in the groin. Ow! Enough! Enough of this! Forces himself up and runs into his room. Hee hee hee. We'll play some more later, Stefano. The text box closes. I follow Stefano into his room. His sprite was different. He had purple and red on some parts of his face and arms, indicating that he has been bruised and bleeding. I've had enough of this family. I've dealt with that fucking brat for too long. Her father is no better. He doesn't give her any attention. He's never taught her respect or discipline. He'll pay. I swear it. The screen flashes again, and I was back in the kitchen room. I'm behind Stefano. A text box appears. This will end it all. All the torment, all the suffering. Not only for me, for this whole godforsaken family. The text box closes. There is a loud clang sound by Stefano's sprite as he exits the kitchen into the dining room. I don't follow him this time. I look in the trash and what I gave me a sickly pit in my stomach. I found the antidote. A text box appears. You found an antidote. You put the antidote in item's pocket. The text box closes. What? How can I? I'm in the past. I shouldn't be able to carry this. I found this when everyone died. How? I stammered in utter confusion. I ran into the dining room, and I see Stefano serving Winter, Mr. Henson, father, and himself breakfast. No, I don't want to watch this. I have to stop this. I move red towards Winter's sprite and press A. Nothing happens. I keep pressing A harder and faster, hoping something would happen. Come on, come on, I don't want her to die. At this point, I'm yelling at my DS, and my eyes start to water. She takes a bite of her meal, which happens to be pancakes in the shape of a heart, with strawberries in the middle. I look over towards Stefano. He is eating the same thing. I look over at Mr. Henson. He's eating an omelette with some bacon. I look back at Stefano. I notice he is staring at me while he's chewing. He's looking right into my eyes. He's giving me a devilish grin and chuckles a bit. No, the tears begin to fall out of my eyes. I don't want this girl to die. She doesn't know any better. This needs to stop. A text box appears. The text box closes. They both fall to the floor and you hear a loud thud that makes my DS vibrate a bit. I look over at Mr. Henson. He doesn't move. He doesn't speak. His face is pale. He doesn't know what to do. He doesn't know how to comprehend what just happened. He quietly and slowly leaves the room. I walk over to Winter's body and press A. A text box appears. Do you want to help? Yes? No. I choose yes. 
The text box said, Used antidote, but nothing happened. What? Why can't I help? I scream as a few tears run down my face. She doesn't deserve this. As I say this, I see her sprite get up, but transparent. She approaches Red and kisses him on the cheek. A text box appears. Thank you for trying. The text box closes. She gives me a soft smile and fades away. I don't know how to react. I wipe the tears from my eyes and grin a bit. I don't know why, but I feel that maybe, just maybe, she is at peace. This is far from over, I think to myself. I walk over to Stefano's body and press A. A text box appears. Do you want help? Yes? No. I hesitate for a moment. I think about what just happened. I feel pity for the old butler, even though he actions led him to this I chose yes. The text box said, Used antidote, but nothing happened. I figured the same thing would happen. Stefano's sprite gets up. It was similar to Winter's, transparent. However, there was something different about him. He didn't have any stress wrinkles, bruises, or bags under his eyes. He didn't look as intimidating as he did before. He looked approachable. A text box appeared. I don't know why you helped me. No one has before. They wouldn't help me. They let me suffer here, trapped in this chateau. Thank you, Red, for giving me peace. Now quickly go to the balcony. The text box closes, and Stefano fades away. The feeling of panic takes over, and I head to the balcony. I find Winter's father standing at the edge. Before I can do anything, a text box appears. I failed you, my love. I deserve this. The text box closes. Mr. Henson jumps off the roof, and you hear a loud thud and splatter sound. My DS screen turns a bright red, almost blinding me, and starts to make a loud staticky shrieking sound. The hairs on my neck stand up, and I scream, dropping my DS to the floor. I dare not touch it. The noise eventually stopped, and my DS turned off. I then picked up my DS, removed the action replay, and try to play Pokemon Pearl. It loads up normally, and goes back to my last save before I had played on the action replay. I travel to the Eterna Forest and head towards the old chateau. I just had to see what happened. I enter, and there's no music playing. I go into the dining room. I don't see Stefano. I head to the room where I first saw Winter. I don't see her. The last place I go was the balcony. This is where Winter's dad jumped. I walk to the edge and look down. Nothing. I never really played Pearl that much after that day. I was happy with myself that I helped two souls trapped in the old chateau find peace. The only thing that bothered me the most is that I wasn't able to help Mr. Henson. I know it's wrong to say, but I'm glad he's dead. That was Innocence by Youth. Final thoughts? A good story buried under five feet of cement. First things first, the formatting and grammar was so bad that I could barely read parts of it. I flubbed lines constantly just because my eyes would get lost on the page, a sentence would be awkwardly worded, or necessary bridging words would be left out altogether. It's one giant brick of run-on sentences and puzzling grammar. If you're wondering why I say some of the lines so awkwardly or outright mispronounce them, look at the text on screen. I'm saying it exactly how the author wrote it. One of the biggest problems I found in this story is that all the time, things are written in the present tense instead of the past tense. My mouth drops instead of dropped. I run into the other room instead of I ran. Anywhere from grade 6 all the way into college, you would fail an assignment if you wrote a story in the present tense like that. It is mind-boggling that someone wouldn't know that. In fact, most of the time after a statement like, I questioned, or I said, would be used. So the words spoken are in past tense, but the running happened right after it was in the present. That's even worse. With all of the appalling grammar, incorrect word choice, and mixing past and present tense, I can all but promise that this story was not proofread. If it was, it was by the author on the same day, the absolute worst time to proofread the story. Just like I said last time someone specifically made a story and sent it to me to be read on my show, you need to sleep on it, 
proofread it the next day, then send it to multiple friends who can proofread it and catch problems you might have missed. This is necessary. The entire start of the story about the old chateau with floating ghosts when you're in the other rooms is taken straight from 4th generation Pokémon. All of that is actually in the game and part of the story, it's simply putting it down on paper. I do like that bit of realism of putting something directly from the game into the story, but at the same time it's kind of a lack of creativity, it's just kind of using an outline of a story and then working from there. The whole sequence where we see Stefano being abused is completely unnecessary, takes away a lot of the mystery, and is ridiculous. It completely breaks the flow of the story, and doesn't even make sense from a narrative standpoint. If there's anything good I can say about this story, it's that if you were to fix all of the appalling grammar and syntax errors, the core idea of the story is very good. I really do think there's a very good story buried under all of the problems, and if the author just proofread this and gotten some second opinions, this would have been a very good story. Unfortunately, unlike Strangled Red, that despite its many problems, still shone through as a very good story, this one didn't. Join me next week when we read the third story made and sent to us by someone within our own community with The Ballad of the Damned. Until next time, sweet dreams.